Why is journal selection so important? Well, choosing a great journal for your next research paper can really speed up your article's chances of success, as well as its route to publication. Putting the time and energy in to selecting a journal really makes the difference with your future success as a writing and publishing academic, which is what we're going to talk about in this video. Before writing your paper, what are the key things to keep in mind? And before submitting your paper to the journal that you've chosen, what are the key things to also have in mind? Those are the issues that we're going to talk about in this presentation. So let's dive in. Let's talk about journal selection. Why is journal selection so important? Well, selecting a great journal for your next research article is critically important because it can speed up the publication of your paper, maximize the impact of your next piece of research. And also, putting time and energy into selecting a journal can help you detect fake journals to manage research and publication ethics. So finding a great journal for your next paper is absolutely key. Why is it important to make sure your research stands out with a great journal? Well, more than 2 million research articles were published around the world in 2022. 2 million! I know! Loads of research articles. So how can you make sure that people read your next paper? Well, by selecting a fantastic journal. Just in the health sciences alone, 30,000 articles are published each month. So it's very important to pick a great journal to make sure that your work stands out. Let's do a little pop quiz, shall we? When is the best time to select a journal? Is it before you've started to write? Is it while you're writing the paper? Or is it at the end of the process when the paper is written and ready to submit. A, before you start to write, B, while you're writing, or C, at the end, when the paper's written. And I can tell you what most researchers would answer to that question, and it's not what you might think. Well, here's the answer. We recommend that the best time to pick a journal for your next paper is before writing the article. Have a journal in mind before you get started so that you can get many of the aspects of writing and publishing sorted out before you get going, like structure, for example. You can use Jenny.ai to help you with the structure of your next paper. Just tell it that you want to work on a research article, put that information into the tool, and then the structure of the article will come out in the writing process. Well, selecting a journal before you start to write is important because every journal is different. The scope, the audience, the length, the kind of article that you might be putting together. Is it a full article? Or is it a short communication? What kind of paper are you putting together? So self-evaluate. There are more reasons here to select a journal early. You'll get to know the journal's aims and scope, its readership, what kinds of disciplines, what topics, the types of articles that the journal publishes. You'll also understand that journal's peer review process, formatting, word limits, copyrights, and also whether the journal uses American or British English. Maximizing your message is also important. And we do recommend that before you start to write, have three elements in mind. Your message, your audience, and your structure. And of course, where does your structure come from? Well, it comes from your audience. Who's your audience? That's your readers. Those are the people reading your journal article. And of course, readership comes from journal selection. We also strongly recommend that you communicate with journal editors before you begin 
to write. There are so many journals out there in the world. Which one to select is a big question. The point of this video. How can you communicate with journal editors before you start the writing process? Understanding the different kinds of impact with research. Is it purely academic impact, which journal you publish in, its impact factor and so on? Or are we looking much wider as we should be at broader socioeconomic impact? The difference that your work makes to the lives of ordinary people. And journal selection, of course, is a key component in maximizing impact. A pre-submission inquiry speeds up the process of article submission. You can send as many pre-submission inquiries as you like. Write to editors, write to as many as you like, select a target journal effectively, give them your abstract and title if you have it available. Let's have another pop quiz here. How many pre-submission inquiries can you send to journals at a time? Is it just one at a time? Is it up to three at a time or is it an unlimited number? Well, the answer is an unlimited number. You're able to write as many pre-submission inquiries as you like to journal editors before you start the submission process. And this can really help with journal selection. Let's talk about things to have in mind before you submit your article to a journal from the perspective of journal selection, of course. Let's have a look at this honest self-evaluation checklist to make sure if your research is good enough for the journal that you've selected. How novel, original is your paper within known context? How good are your methods, the study design, data analysis, and so on? Have you minimized bias to maximize your study's validity? What are the real world implications, applications and influence of your study? And for how long? Is your study ethically compliant in terms of data, trials, publishing ethics and authorship and so on? And is your writing highly readable and suitable for non-specialist readers? And of course, you can use the Jenny.ai tool to help with the last of these, making sure that your writing is highly readable and suitable for non-specialist readers. We talk to authors all around the world all of the time, and these are the kinds of things that authors look for when selecting a journal. It's impact factor, it's reputation, it's reach within the field, and whether or not it's open access or not. Effective journal selection is a marriage between research and publication. Here's a summary of the journal merits that researchers look for as well. It's about time to publish. How long will this target journal take to publish my work? What's the impact factor of the journal? Is that the best I can do with my paper? And will the reach and readership be wide? These are the three related issues that researchers look for when choosing a journal for their research articles. But which factor is most important to you? Is it the aims and scope, the readership? Is it the kind of article that you're able to write, the length, the evidence level? Is it publication speed, publication frequency? What about indexing, the rank, the impact factor? Is the journal print or online? Is it open access? And what's the acceptance rate? Do have a think about these different variables. Which one is most important to you before you start to think about submitting to a journal. Here's a table in which we've summarized journal indicators. The impact factor, that's the number of citations over the last two years divided by the number of articles. The site score, that's the number of citations to all articles published in a journal in the last three years divided by that number of articles the IPP. That's the impact per publication. And again, that's the number of citations to all publications over the past three years divided by the number of articles. 
the SNIP, the SNIP. This is source normalized impact per paper and it's IPP, impact per paper, corrected for discipline. So medicine, biology, chemistry, physics, humanities, and so on. The eigenfactor is the number of citations within the last five years divided by the number of articles. Whereas H index, Hirsch index, Hirsch index is the number of articles with that number of citations. So what's a preprint server? What is a preprint platform? This is a place online where you can put research, either in a partial state or in a finished state. You can put a finished article that you've yet to submit to a journal onto a preprint platform and other researchers can look at it. They can look at it, they can comment on it, and this is how open peer review can happen. Preprinting is a great idea if you want to share your research quickly with other people in your community. Indeed, preprinting has been around for decades in some subjects like physics and mathematics, for example. It enables other researchers in your field to look at the work, to comment on the work and to peer review the work. So a fantastic idea if you want to share your work widely and openly with the world. Without preprinting, we would not be where we are today with vaccines and other treatments for COVID-19, for example. If we'd had to wait for everything to get peer reviewed and published, well, we'd still be waiting for some of the research to get accepted. Let's have another pop quiz quickly. What copyrights do you keep when you publish on a preprint platform? Is it A, you keep all the copyright? Is it B, you only keep some of the copyright? Or is it C, you give up all of your copyright as a researcher? A, B, or C, publishing your research on a preprint platform. The answer, of course, is A. You keep all the copyright if you publish your research on a preprint platform. Absolutely fantastic. And one of the reasons why researchers around the world are so keen on the use of preprint platforms. Open access is a component of the open science movement, and it's simply referring to publishing research open for all. So open access or OA publishing means that your publication, your research will be accessible for everybody. Anyone around the world can download your research. This can include work, data, results, conclusions, and sometimes even peer review. Open access was really important to us during the pandemic. Much research was pre-printed and published open access, which actually accelerated our work on virus, viruses, antibodies, and vaccines during the COVID-19 pandemic. In terms of different kinds of journals, we've got traditional journals, gold and green open access. Gold open access, this is where your work gets published completely open for anyone to access. Completely open for anyone to access. Whereas green open access refers to you publishing a late stage draft of your research on an open platform like ResearchGate, academia.edu, or your own website, or indeed a preprint platform. Watch out for fake journals. It's well known in open access publishing that there are many journals that may not be above board. They may be just trying to take your money and publish your paper in a not very good way. They're not really doing peer review properly. They're just taking advantage of the open access publishing model to get some money out of you. And they're getting more sophisticated. So it can be quite different to spot the difference between real and fake journals. Here are some guidelines that we've put together to help you spot a fake journal. Have a look at the website. Is the URL strange? Does the site contain obvious errors? What about indexing? Is the journal 
listed in an index like the DOAJ, the Directory of Open Access Journals. What about the editorial board? Are the members known to you? You can write to them, ask them if they are aware that they're on the editorial board of this journal. Perhaps they don't know. One of the characteristics of predatory publishers is that they just put people on their editorial boards to make them look good. Is the journal publishing regularly? What about the articles? Are they properly peer reviewed? Is the journal telling you about its peer review process? What about the fees? Never pay anything for open access publishing until your article has been accepted and make sure you're not getting lots and lots of spam emails. Another characteristic feature of predatory publishers. So our rules for journal selection, aim high, choose appropriately and learn to sell and manage your submission. Thanks very much for listening to this video on journal selection. My name is Dr. Gareth Dyke and this has been a video brought to you by Scitrain and our fantastic partners, Jenny.ai. Do have a look at the Jenny.ai tool the next time you need to write a research article. The tool can really, really speed up the process. <laughs>